Hey guys, today we're driving the 2022 Lexus LX 600 F Sport. We just drove the ultimate luxury package, which was close to $120,000 or something. This F Sport's a little bit more reasonable. We're at about $103,000 starting price and about $107,000 as tested with a few options. So, what's this F Sport like to drive? I've spent some more time in this LX this week. Uh, the ultra luxury we only spent about half an hour in so i've got some more driving impressions i've got some more thoughts for you on what this new lexus lx is like to drive of course we don't get the new land cruiser in the united states anymore so this is kind of our only option we still get crawl control downhill uh, assist control multi-train select a bunch of different drive modes uh, the selectable four-wheel drive system for high for low lots of great off-road capability though this F-Sport does have 22-inch wheels on it. This is a little bit sportier of a package. We have F-Sport appointed seats, some red accents in the interior, aluminum trim, the 22-inch wheels that I mentioned, and we have a rear stabilizer bar along with F-Sport tuned suspension. This does have the automatic height control, uh, hydraulically actuated suspension, so you can raise it up, slam it all the way to the ground, locking center differential, a viscous rear limited slip differential. Um, anyway. Lots of stuff to talk about in this LX. Let's walk you around it, show you what it looks like inside and out. We'll talk about some of the features and then we'll take it for a drive. Again, really liking the looks of this new LX. This design is really growing on me. I love the shape of the rear end. I think it's a much more attractive design than the previous generation LX 570. Gone is the 5.7 liter V8. It's replaced by a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6, and that's mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission. This F Sport also has an appearance package, different front grille, slightly lower front bumper, and I believe we also get a different rear bumper too in this trim package. A little bit more aggressive and sporty looking. Let's take a look, actually let's take a look in the back seat first, because this has seven seats. This is a third row. The Ultra Luxury only had four seats that we tested. You can access the third row like that, and I will admit it's kind of tight back there. This really isn't that much different from the previous generation LX. The third row was usable in a pinch, but that's kind of about it. So, you know, you can fit adults back here. There's a little bit of leg room, even if you fold this back, uh, but behind that third row seat, there's zero room for cargo. It's really not a usable space as a three row vehicle. Ooh. However, I did spend some time in an LX570 once, and we used a third row over a weekend to haul some friends around, and it, it worked. In a pinch, it worked. But if you're doing it on a regular basis, I'd probably swing for a larger vehicle like a Sienna or a Highlander, at least with a larger interior space. The LX being a body on frame SUV, the interior packaging has always been a little bit smaller than you would expect on the inside. Once you fold that third row down though, you get a decent amount of cargo space back here. Get this little floor mat that's always falling in and out. Not much storage under there. Not too many storage compartments back here. This LX570 can tow up to 8,000 pounds, and I haven't tried removing this tow hitch cover, but it looks like you've got to pop it out with the screwdriver. You've got two clips here. I don't like that, because that's a little bit more tedious than it, than it really should be. A lot of these tow covers just have a twist, twist out removal piece, and this looks like it's a little bit more of an involved job. You do get a full size spare tire down there, that's nice. And your trailer pins are down here, that's okay. Um, but yeah, kind of an interesting configuration there. I wish Lexus would make that a quick remove uh, panel. Here's what our 22 inch wheels look like. Right now, the uh, automatic height control is set to normal mode, so we can go even lower. Let's show you what that looks like in access height. Yeah, it really slams down to the ground. Makes it a little bit easier to get in and out of. And that looks pretty mean hard parked like this. 
Let's take a look under the hood at this 5 liter twin turbo V6. The hood and the fuel tank levers are right next to each other, so be sure you know which is which before you hit them. Rated for much better fuel economy than the previous generation LX. It's rated for 22 MPG on the highway and 17 in the city. This week I've been averaging around 17 MPG uh, in combined driving. Um, haven't done a ton of longer distance driving, but you should be realistically between 15 to 17 MPG in this. Maybe a little bit better if you're doing a longer road trip. Plenty of power, 479 pound-feet of torque from this twin turbo V6. 409 horsepower and made with a 10-speed auto great gearing for lots of power this thing is fast it doesn't feel as special or smooth or as refined as the 5.7 v8 used to but that's okay in the name of better fuel economy more power more usable performance it's probably a pretty good uh good update for this engine looking in the second row not crazy about these f sport seats they just kind of they look a little aftermarket, in my opinion. I feel like the, the red accents are kind of in the wrong places, but that's okay. F-Sport trim is kind of a funky trim for this LX anyway. We do get the Mark Levinson reference audio system in this. Rear climate control, heated and cooled rear seats. Decent amount of legroom in the second row. I'm seated behind myself at 5'10". Plenty of headroom. Lots of visibility around me in this interior. I don't feel like I'm too cocooned in here or in a cave-like back seat. And we've got this new centered console. Controversial dual screen layout. Personally, I don't really mind it that much. The bottom screen shows your climate control settings, your off-road settings, and just kind of gives you a clear view of all of those. You get physical controls for just about everything. And then we have the new updated Toyota Lexus infotainment, which is a touch screen. They've gotten rid of the silly touch pad down here and replace it with a much simpler and easier to use and quick to respond touch screen, which I think works great. Is it the most attractive and cohesive design? It is not. <laughs> Let's hop on the front seat and we'll show you guys a couple more things up there. No rear sunroof. All right, front seat of the LX570. I think everything is pretty well organized in this front seating area for the driver. You've got your height control settings right here. You can raise this way up into full off-road H2 mode, high two. Uh, you can lock your center differential, turn off traction control. You've got buttons down here for ventilated and heated seats, a heated steering wheel button, a couple USB ports down there. Here is your mode selector dial for drive modes. You've got Eco, Comfort, Normal, Sport, Sport Plus, and Custom. We'll probably just leave it in Normal or Sport for this drive. One kind of surprise with this new LX is some of the switch gear, the buttons, and just kind of the feel of some of the interior pieces in this Lexus LX 600 feel cheap. Listen to this and this turn signal. It just doesn't feel, doesn't have the same weight and quality as the previous generation. And I notice, also noticed this in the new Lexus NX. Um, not as impressed with Lexus's interior quality in their newer vehicles. It looks nice. It definitely, I think, looks better and is more attractive and more up-to-date. The leather is wonderful. The touch points are beautiful. The steering wheel is still very nice. But some of your inputs, some of your interaction points feel a little plasticky, a little bit cheap. And this aluminum trim, even though you can definitely tell it's metal, um, it looks a little bit cheap too. I don't know, kind of strange. We have a wireless charge pad, which was worked intermittently this week. And we get this cool box, which can cool your sandwiches or whatever you want to refrigerate. Uh, kind of doesn't give you a lot of space to put stuff in the center console, but if you want the cool box, it's probably a cool option to spec. You just press the button right there to cool off your devices or things that you want to. There's the sunroof. Pretty straightforward controls up here. You got a place to put your sunglasses, big visors that slide, grab handles right here for when you're doing off-road driving or getting into your LX600. Let's look at this little tiny screen. So we've got some options here for your display, your settings, 
climate control. You can change the front or rear climate control from the screen. You can sync, auto, climate control, eco, heat, cool. That's kind of nice. Probably turn that on, save some fuel. And then here you've got all of your off-road settings. You even get a, uh, an inclinometer and an all four-wheel drive uh, setting view right there along with a G meter. Lots of interesting drive mode views right here in this screen. And then, uh, unfortunately, we don't get a home button or anything in this Lexus display. The Toyota still gives us a little home button here to the left. So you have to kind of, I guess you just hit the Lexus button and that'll take you back to the home screen. Got music, phone, vehicle. I mean, this is pretty much the same as what Toyota gives us in their new infotainments. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. The focus here is on CarPlay and Android Auto and that seems to work great. So no major complaints there. You do have a button here. You can show us our forward facing camera and our 360 cam. If we put us in reverse, it'll show us the cameras that we want. That's nice. I like that. All right, so we are in high two mode right now. Let's show you what the suspension looks like. Approach angle looks like ground clearance is like in this highest setting. Ooh, that's a big difference. Look at all that fender gap. All right, so tons of ground clearance. I think there's something like a seven inch difference between the lowest and the highest setting. It's pretty significant. Great approach angles. Even though this rolls on 22 inch wheels, that is plenty of space for some off-roading. And I like how the front bumper doesn't angle down as much as uh, the previous generation. It's just, you get a little more ground clearance that way. Looks like someone already had a little bit of a scrape on this press car too. That's great. Really nice brake over angle. Pretty good departure angle too. You can really do some proper off-roading in these LXs. They are mighty impressive off-road. I spent some time in the new Tundra TRD Pro a couple weeks ago and got to test out the new crawl control, the new um, multi-terrain select systems. And Toyotas have had these great systems for a long time. They haven't really changed that much, except they've gotten a lot smoother and quieter. And that's the same case with this LX. We're not gonna be doing any off-roading today, but at some point I wanna take one of these out with maybe smaller 18 inch wheels or something and really kind of mob it in the dunes and see what it can do off-road. Cause that's really where this shines in comparison to its competition is this can just go anywhere. All right, let's see if this LX600 F-Sport is a worthy trim to consider. If you want a slightly sportier driving experience out of your uh, Lexus Land Cruiser. All right, the suspension will automatically lower to normal once we get to going. One thing that's really cool is in the 360 cam, it'll show you what's underneath you. So if we reverse here over these parking lines, it's gonna show us the line underneath the vehicle. It just automatically draws that. How cool is that? If we go forward here over this drain, it's gonna show us the drain in the parking lot under the Lexus. Look at that, that's really cool. Super useful uh, off-road, on-road, and many situations. All right, so in this new Lexus LX, gone is the hydraulic power steering. We now have an electric power steering rack. It's a little bit lighter. It's a lot less cumbersome on transitions. So you can make low speed adjustments, low speed changes in a parking lot. And you used to get quite a bit of resistance from the hydraulic power steering rack that made this LX feel very cumbersome and heavy. No longer the case with this new 600. Um, you don't get as much feel, it doesn't feel as weighty and, and solid, but actually to live with on a daily basis, I prefer this E-Pass system over the old hydraulic rack just because it, it's better tuned and better suited. It feels more modern and updated and fresh. Plenty of power though. This really hustles. 10 speed does a great job choosing the right gear out of corners. Lower the suspension, it's still on high one, which is kind of ridiculous. There we go, now we're back down to normal height. 
you can really mob this around in high mode for a, a much higher speed than I was expecting. All right, so we'll engage cruise control here. We have an adaptive cruise control with lane centering. All of that is projected on our head-up display and down here in the gauge cluster. Closing that sunroof, we get a little bit less wind noise on the highway, which is nice. Opening it up, you can kind of hear the difference. Yeah, it feels pretty good at highway speeds. Over rougher, bumpier, bouncier roads, this does seem to ride a little bit busy. A little bit busier than I was expecting, and I, that's probably the F-Sport tuned suspension. Uh, once you get out on the flat straight roads, it's very comfortable. And over some larger bumps, it soaks them up pretty well, but sometimes this can be a little bit of a bouncy suspension setup. I would probably prefer the non-F-Sport LX for that reason, just to get a little bit more softness out of my uh, you know, luxury SUV. I'll say this, the new LX still drives and feels very similar to the previous generation LX. It feels a little bit lighter, a little bit more nimble, a little bit more refined. Uh, of course, you get a modern interior, more tech. It's a, it's a more updated space. It doesn't feel ultra fresh. I mean, Toyota, Lexus, they only make incremental changes in their new model years. They're not going to completely revolutionize everything. I like that Lexus is still stuck with physical controls and buttons in this LX. We can pretty much control everything at a arm's reach. I don't have to go deep into the infotainment for anything. Um, I love that. That's fantastic. Where everyone is going to touch screens, uh, we still get those here, but ultimately I can control everything in this vehicle that I need to at a moment's notice and very quickly. I appreciate that. Does it still feel a little bit dated in its current design? Maybe, but that's a personal preference thing. Personally, I don't really mind this dual screen layout. It works. These are minor gripes that ultimately really won't, most people won't care about in their ownership experience. If you want an LX, you know you want an LX. You buy it for its utility, its reliability, its overall capability. I think the changes here are this new LX looks better. You get all the updated tech. It doesn't feel as solid and as just absolutely bulletproof, can go anywhere, do anything. It feels a little bit lighter, a little bit rattlier. There's some uh, sounds from the back seats and some of the switch gear is a little bit cheap uh, feeling. Ultimately, this is the same vehicle though. I mean, it's still got a lot of the same stuff except for the powertrain, similar suspension setups. Everything's been retuned and updated, of course. But uh, this can still take you anywhere, do anything, and probably run for 400,000 miles and uh, we don't really know about the reliability with this 3.5 twin turbo yet. However, I'm sure Lexus has done their due diligence and this is gonna be a very good powertrain. I've gotta to say, to drive and to hustle around, it's actually kind of fun and uh, a major improvement on the drivability and the utility of the, of the 5.7 V8. So, that said, let's put us into Sport Plus here and hustle this thing around a little bit, see how it does. Brake pedal feels pretty good. Nice and firm. Decent amount of bite once you get into the pedal too. All right, we're gonna put us into normal mode because it keeps defaulting to high <laughs> when we come down from speed. Ripping off shifts in Sport Plus. That's pretty good. We even get a manual mode with paddle shifters. I like how there's no fake noise or any gimmicks in this LX. All just natural engine sound. Steering actually feels pretty good when you weight it up. You can feel some vibration through the powertrain in the rim. And that's something that we experienced a little bit in the LX 570 and I like that. Pretty good steering feel for an SUV of this size and an electric powered uh, steering rack. Yeah, this thing hauls. It really pulls. Torque everywhere, really linear, smooth power band.
once you start driving this LX F Sport a little bit quicker, the F Sport suspension and handling upgrades start to make a little bit more sense. This is a slightly flatter, more nimble handling package compared to uh, the standard LX. Let's see how it tackles an entrance ramp. Let's do Sport Plus mode here. Heavy into the brakes, turning in. A little bit of body roll, but that's okay. Oh yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. It was almost flat through there. I probably could have been flat. I lifted out of just a little bit of self-preservation. Haven't really played too much with the adaptive cruise control this week. Um, it's a it's a pretty good system overall. It's not something that I like to use in traffic too much. The lane centering seems to work okay, uh, keeping me pretty well centered between the lines. The adaptive system is a little bit brake heavy, a little bit conservative, it leaves a little bit more distance, doesn't accelerate as quickly around slower traffic as I would like, but these systems are always like that. They're not really meant to be used in flowing traffic situations. If you're just cruising on the highway for miles, this is a fantastic system. It takes some of the fatigue off of driving, um, and it seems like it's doing a pretty good job right now negotiating corners. It's not prompting me to put my hands on the wheel all the time. This is a super comfortable highway cruiser. You can just absolutely devour miles in this new LX, and the high driving position, the visibility that you get out of this cabin, it all adds up to a really, really, really nice experience on the highway. Let's test out the Mark Levinson Premium Audio System. That is an option on this. And we'll just quickly go into our sound test playlist and just do a quick sound system test. Easy volume and track selection controls here on the steering wheel. We got a home button for this infotainment somewhere. I'll admit, not blown away by the Mark Levinson system and this new LX. It's it's good, but it's not like as good as the GX is or as maybe the LS uh, 500 is. It's just okay. All right, all right. Still in Sport Plus mode. Actually, a pretty comfortable mode to drive in regularly. Chatty tires. Great steering feel, though. What a surprise. Definitely feel a difference in suspension softness between normal and sport plus. Things smooth out quite a bit in normal mode and we even get a comfort mode. Yeah, this is still a very comfortable SUV even with the slightly stiffer F Sport suspension. I do like all the information that Lexus shows you in the head-up display. You can see your cruise control set speed, the speed limit, the speed you're traveling, RPM. That's a nice head-up display. Very clear, great colors. I don't believe it shows up very well with polarized sunglasses, but not many of them really do.
just get into the power in this thing. The f- nose kind of lifts up and you just rock it forward. <laughs> this twin turbo V6 doesn't sound as special uh, as the V8 did, but it's very nice to drive. It's a fantastic engine. I wonder if they'll ever put the iForce Max hybrid powertrain in this LX or if there just isn't enough room for everything with the way this is packaged. All right, so how can we sum up the new LX600? It's a bit of a mixed bag, but overall, this is a, I think it's a better LX than the previous generation. Dynamically, it's fantastic. Uh, The old LX was a little bit cumbersome to hustle around. This thing hauls. It's nimble, it handles great for the size and weight. You can feel all the weight and all the hundreds and hundreds of pounds that Lexus took out of this new generation LX. You can really feel it. This is under 6,000 pounds now. Um, I've read somewhere that they took out 450 pounds out of this, this vehicle. Pretty impressive, and you feel it, and it really shows. It improves fuel economy, it improves handling, it improves drivability. I love the new steering feel. It's not as heavy and hefty, but it's so much better to live with. Um, the versatility you get from this LX is really nice. I think, you know, we pa- an Escalade passed us on the highway just a few minutes ago. And that's in the same class as this. But those, these are such different vehicles. I feel like if you want an LX, you're going to know that you want an LX. You want the off-road capability. You want the reliability. You want the brand image, the look, the feel of this. Maybe you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of utility and interior space and usability for what this vehicle represents and what it can do. And that's okay. Ultimately, the formula here hasn't changed. It's just updated, marginally improved in some areas. It's great that Lexus is offering the LX in the United States, but honestly, I've always kind of been an LX camp. If you were to give me the choice between Land Cruiser and the Lexus LX, I would have chosen the LX because pricing wise, they're pretty similar. The LX offers the height control suspension, which I think makes it just kind of the ultimate do everything SUV. And uh, this new LX, I think, delivers. There are some places where Lexus can improve on, though, and I'm sure they will as this model kind of progresses through its life cycle. So um, anyway, pretty good first impressions on this. A few things that I would like to see Lexus improve on, but ultimately still a pretty solid SUV and a great evolution uh, from the previous generation 570. The great thing is, is if you want to go get a 570, you can, and you don't really have to worry about stuff breaking on it because it's a Lexus LX. So, you know, maybe this new LX 600 doesn't speak to you in some ways, or you want to wait a little few more years for, you know, reliability stuff to be sorted out. Go get yourself an LX 570, get the V8, enjoy it. Uh, But if you want a more modern interior, you want that better fuel economy, the updated look, this new LX 600 is pretty awesome. It's a great overall package. Anyway, we'll leave this review there. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.